live. Yay! <laughs> I so missed you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last Friday. Go away, telephone. Um, but... Uh, good grief. Okay, I'm not at home, obviously, because you would not hear that sound. But I just wanted you to know um, I made it safely to South Carolina. And I'm so ready to be back and um, have a lot to tell you about Pittsburgh. Um, and I'm going to say I missed you guys on Friday Fun because I was spending time with some of you. And I had an absolute blast. The joy was all mine, I promise you. Love, love, love meeting my my um my um friday fun live friends in person it was amazing um classes were good i enjoyed teaching them um but really the highlight for me ugh, phone go away um uh, the highlight for me i'm sorry sorry guys we're getting we're getting spam calls coming in and i am not at home so i have no way to turn that sound off uh, hopefully that's the end of that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, anyway, let me just tell you a little bit. Um, I got to teach three classes at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. I really, really, really enjoyed my time there. I, I'm going to try to submit classes next year and hope to be able to teach there again. For those of you who've never been to a crochet conference or a knitting, crochet, fiber arts conference, um, one thing that's kind of cool about this one is it has... A lot of other different crafts there too. You can learn spinning. I think they had some weaving classes. Um, I met uh, a friend of Terry's, Terry the Archer and Ace. Hey there, girl. Um, and her friend Beth uh, is a, a fabulous um, cross stitcher. I mean, she makes like works of art with cross stitch. And I think she was able to take some classes there too. So I don't know that they teach cross stitch, but there are other things that are not specific to crochet and knit that were there. There were uh, there were a lot of vendors. It wasn't um, overwhelming, but they had a lot of very interesting uh, vendors, two ballrooms full, and something I'd never experienced before, which was uh, they had these mobile, like, uh, like trailers that were air conditioned, and they travel around the area uh, and you can buy yarn like right off of the truck. It's it's kind of like a food truck, but much, much nicer, <laughs> of course, because they're selling yarn and it was just very well done. Well, let me go ahead and start. I have a surprise. Okay, the first person I decided before I went live, before I saw any names, that the first person in my chat was going to get something special today. Michelle M. Uh, it was great meeting you too from Montana. Um, I have something for you. And I'll, I will send it to you. Um, so if you can send me an, an email to bonniebayatme.com, uh, I'm going to be featuring uh, a book that is by a friend of mine in a little bit in the broadcast. And I just want you to know you're the winner. I, since I only have one, I just didn't want to create a lot of drama, you know, amongst everybody on who's going to get what. So I do have something to send to you. So definitely send me an email. As you all know, I don't save your addresses. Uh, I'm not a spammer, <laughs> so, you know, I only save the, I only have the addresses that I have permission to have, and that would be through signing up through my newsletter, which, as you know, gets sent out about once every blue moon, and I have to get better at that. Um, but anyway, and let me, let me tell you a story um, before I jump into the chat here. Um, you know, what's probably the two things that you fear the most when you're traveling? And I just want you to know I've completed the circle and I've had done both of them now. Um, you remember the story I told you when I flew into New Orleans? I left my phone in the restroom. And I won't get into details as to why I do that. But if you ever put a phone in your back pocket and you're female, you'll understand why you want to be careful of your phone. Um, but anyway, the phone did get recovered. I got it back within 20 minutes, but it was the busiest 20 minutes of my life. Well, fast forward to two days ago, um, I drove um, down from Maryland to South Carolina, to sunny South Carolina, yay. I'm going to be visiting with my mother-in-law for a couple of weeks um, and probably getting a lot of much needed rest. <laughs> and um, two hours into the trip, I left at 5.30 in the morning, 
no, 5.45 in the morning to get out of Washington, D.C. area because it just helps to beat the traffic out. And it worked. And two hours into the trip, I'm somewhere outside, uh, or getting near Richmond, Virginia, and then I realized, I don't think I put my wallet in my backpack. And turns out I didn't. So I am driving um, a potentially eight to 10 hour trip, made it in seven, but anyway, um, trip on the road, no driver's license, no credit cards, nothing. So, um, I was able to make it down okay, and I'll tell you why and how, so in case this ever happens to you, okay? Um, and thankfully, my husband was able to overnight express my wallet to me, so I'm no longer driving slightly illegally. First time I've done that, I mean, I think ever, um, such a long trip. So, I mean, absent-minded professor here, oh my gosh. And since everybody's blaming everything on COVID these days, and since I had COVID about six weeks, five, six weeks ago, I'm blaming it on COVID brain, you know, the COVID fog, in case some of you have had that. Um, I've done some things recently that are just strange. I just have been forgetful. Um, so anyway, blaming it on COVID, whether I, that's justified or not, I'll leave it up to you. Um, but let me give you a, a hint of what you can do when you travel, okay? Whether you're traveling by plane, by car, whatever. Um, and I happen to have been thoughtful enough to do this, and this is the only reason why I could buy gasoline and get all the way down to where I needed to be. Um, put some extra emergency cash somewhere when you travel, in your bag, in a backpack, um, in your back pocket, anywhere but in your wallet, okay? In case you're ever out traveling, your, your wallet gets lifted from your pocket, someone steals it, you lose it, you leave it, whatever. Put some extra emergency cash somewhere else on in your luggage somewhere. I'm just, just just saying. And that's how I was able to get back. I knew I had some money in jacket pocket that I had actually been given by a friend. And um, at the conference, Jeannie, Proverbs 31 lady, thank you so much. I mean, I, I was hesitant to, to, to accept, but she was very insistent. So I was thankful. And so um, I knew that that was in my coat pocket. I also had some money in my uh, backpack that was not in my wallet. And I generally try to travel that way. Well, that's how I was able to buy gas because the gas station that I stopped at to get gas, they didn't even take Apple Pay not to, re not to fill up gas. So I'm like, because I had my cell phone for Apple Pay, but they would not accept that. So anyway, you're welcome. Just a tip. Put money somewhere other than in your wallet, just in case. So take it from a forgetful person. <laughs> um, anyway, I just want to share that with you just to know, you know, I am so human <laughs> in so many ways. Um, but I have a lot of good people in my life who keep me on track and my husband is one of them. So thank God for, for my hubby. Um, let me go ahead and say hey to everybody, um, or try to hit, hit some of the, some of you there. Um, Michelle, again, it's good to see you in the chat. Thank you for, um, joining me for an early breakfast at the conference. That was so much fun to, to meet you and your friend. And, um, Margita, hello, it's good to see you there. And, um, Jacqueline. Um, she's wishing everybody a good morning. Just to let you know, Hannah is not in the chat today. So hopefully we won't have any trolls. If you see any unusual troll activity, I believe even as a, a viewer, if you are signed in, please, please flag it. I'm going to try to get to things. If you see something that's just really inappropriate, please flag it, report it. I believe you can still do that. Um, but Hannah is out enjoying some time with one of her siblings and his wife. And um, lots of blessings going on there. So I'm just really glad Hannah made it home. Um, she got home a lot faster than I did on that Southwest airplane, which was one of the airlines that didn't have pilots on strike, thankfully. So, um, <laughs> yeah, a lot is going on. Um, so we have Archer Nays, Terry, my friend. So great to meet you. I, it's just so amazing now that I, I know these, that I know you guys. That It's not just a name that comes up on my computer, but you are real. I just love you know, Michelle and, and Terry and Beth and, um, and so many, so many others, Diana and, 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 and so many other names that, as you know, I, 
I tend to have a hard time memorizing, but, but man, what a blessing. Um, and Ardella, Ardella, um, she said, good morning from Burley, Idaho. Um, I just hope your Friday's off to a great start. Yes, it is. And I'm here with you guys. So yes, we have love to cry waving back at you and, and Red Hook, Diana, I think it's Diana. I keep kept getting, sometimes I get, I'll say Diane or Diana and, uh, I have relatives of both names, so so forgive me, but it's so great to meet you. Um, really enjoyed that meal. And um, I have Kathy Breyer and Tracy Hamilton from Soaked, Oklahoma City. So we've had over five inches of rain in the last two days. I need a boat. Oh, no. Time to start building that ark, huh? <laughs> oh, dear. I hope things go okay. I hope you don't get too much flooding or anything there. And we have Sheila from Brooklyn, New York. Yes, Sheila, it was great meeting you too. Thank you for taking that class. We had some interesting things going on in that class, but um, thank you so much. And Terry, goodness gracious, thank you so much for your generosity. Terry just donated $10 to our super chat. And for those of you who are new and don't know, um, let me tell you where that is going. Once we get to $100, I'm gonna try to come up with a song of some sort. And um, this month, it's going to be our our charity is Rancho 3M. So we'll be really happy to bless them. And um, and anyway, so thank you guys for your, your sweet gifts. And we have Kelly Hart. Um, she says, hello, how are you today? I just sold a dog booties to a customer today. Oh, wow. So Kelly, I guess you're you're working, you're on selling your crochet. How, how great is that? Um yeah, and Terry's saying hey to Sheila. Yeah, oh, that was a fun class. You guys were so good, so patient with me. I so appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Jacqueline's asking for some of that water in Southern California from uh, from Tracy. Wow. Yeah, I, I wish it. Yeah, it doesn't quite work that way, does it? Um, yeah, and then we have Rovilla in the chat. Um, she says, I've got you live again. Hey, Rovilla. I hope the broadcast is okay. Um, I, mine seems to be a lot better today. I did some little tweaking on my phone. So hopefully um, what we're trying today will work, even though the internet is slightly slower. But from what I'm getting on my computer, it looks pretty good. Um, fingers crossed <laughs> on this one. Uh, since my guru is about, my technology guru is about 450 miles away from me right now. Um, yeah, and Jack, thank you, Tracy. She's going to send all that water to Southern Cal. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, T Kelly, sorry to hear about your boss's dog. I hope, hope that, you know, that, that does happen. That does happen. Um, I can get off onto some dog stories myself. I used to work at a vet when I was in, uh, when I was in high school, worked as a vet technologist, um, we didn't call us technologists. We were kind of the assistants. We just did whatever needed to be done, everything from helping with surgery to mopping the floor and cleaning the kettle. So it was not as glamorous as the word technologist would sound, um, but we sure did a lot of fun stuff for, for high school kids. Um, yeah, so, but anyway, so sorry to hear about that, Kelly. And um, let's see. Hey, Harriet, so good to have you in the chat. Um, and Beth H, she says, it was wonderful seeing you in Pittsburgh. Yes, Beth, it was so much fun. I love seeing your, your cross stitch. You, you are an amazing gal. It, 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 that's really pretty cool stuff. And, um, I, I wish I could show these to you, but, um, Beth, if you have a, a website or, or a place where you like on Facebook, I, I don't know if you're comfortable putting the link in the chat. You're welcome to do that. I don't, I don't forbid stuff like that, but, um, but I understand, you know, privacy and all that you probably don't want to open that up to the world, but it'd be really cool to be able to show folks, um, the things that you can do with the needle and the thread. It's just pretty amazing. Um, and we have Janet and, and, uh, Brad's mom, Linda from Southwest Chicago suburbs. So good to have you in the chat and Rovilla. She said, I just finished a lace shawl with number 10 thread. It's beautiful. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That, I bet, I bet it is Rovilla. Um, you've got better hands than I do, my, my friend. Uh, I, I have done some 
uh, thread crochet, but I'm quite honestly, my, my, um, my tension is just not tight enough to do that well. So I t tend to stay away from that, but I, I so admire those who can do that. And we have Mel's Kitchen and Crochet Done My Way with Wanda. Hey, Wanda, so good to see you in the chat. And Phyllis and Sean from Iowa. Um, and Cynthia Burke, it was great meeting you too. Um, it, you know, it was really nice to meet you and your husband there. Um, she said, love meeting me and my beautiful car. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I drove my little red Miata to the conference and had enough room to get everything in there. I had to plan a little bit, especially with the guitar, but... It is doable, and it's just such a such a comfortable ride for my back, which you know can go in and out at times. But uh, I know it sounds crazy, a little car good for your back, but the the Miata is whoever they did with designing that seat for the driver. It just makes the driving experience. I'm sounding like a commercial now, but um, it it really is the best, most comfortable seat I've ever ridden in for my back, and, and I and I have an SUV. That is a nice cush mobile, but it's not as comfortable. <laughs> Don't understand it, but I'm I'm happy with that. Ah, um, uh, Beth, you, um, you deserve it, my friend. Um, she said she took a macrame class there. Oh yeah, that's right. You made the little plant holder. I, I'd forgotten that. I felt like my brain was was on overdrive, just trying to remember everybody's names, which I think I'm starting to piece together with photos now. Because I made sure, like, um, I, I put a picture of Kelly Dye's, uh, Kelly, well, Kelly D, I should say, um, Afghans in, on my Facebook page and on Instagram. So if you get a chance to see them. And I kept getting her name mixed up with, with Jennifer. And, 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 oh my goodness, it just takes me about 35 opportunities to use a person's name before it really becomes part of my long-term memory. But you guys were just so patient with that. Uh, oh, thanks, thanks, Linda. She said, don't forget to hit that, that thumbs up button if you can. It looks like 44 of you did already. That's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, let's see, we have Stacy from Cincinnati. Hey, Stacy. Um, and Joni. Um, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yay. Uh, and, um, yeah, Kelly's having phone trouble. Welcome to the club, Kelly. <laughs> we have... Wanda Brayboy in the chat from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hey, neighbor, I'm just down the road from you, not too far from Myrtle Beach. And we have Lynn. Hey, Lynn, so good to see you in the chat. And Denise and um, and Kelly, that sounds like you're doing a lot of wonderful things with your crochet for your friends there. And um, oh, Brad's mom says, I have chemo brain. Oh, wow. I had no idea, Linda. I, I think I wrote you down on my, I, I, I just forgotten there. She said, I had chemo in 1998. Okay, but my memory has never been the same. Oh, wow. I had no idea, Linda. Wow. I'm glad you're still here with us, though. That's amazing. You you went through chemo, uh, and that's, what, 24 years ago? Almost 25 years ago. We are so glad you made it through that chemo. Um, which reminds me, um, I, I'm going to go a little bit off course for a second. Uh, I've been listening to books on Audible, and I was telling uh, the the group uh, at at uh, was it Thursday, Friday, Friday night's dinner about this book, and uh, I'm listening to another book. I I, I again, um, this is an author I like to read. His name is uh, Malcolm Gladwell, and uh, if you get a chance, and if you have Audible where you can listen to a book while you crochet, um, one that I recommend. I listened to the whole thing and I really, really enjoyed it. And I loved the message. Um, it has a very provocative title though. It's called, I hate the Ivy league. And, um, I, I was just really blessed by it. I just learned a lot and they had some amazing stories in there. And I'm, I'm listening to another one by him. I listened to about eight chapters on the road, um, while I was driving South two days ago and it's called David and Goliath. And he has a lot of interesting stories. And the reason that that's triggered in my brain is that he tells the story of um, the man who came up with, uh, a, well, it's not a total cure, but much more of a cure than they used to have for children's leukemia. And, um, and how they 
and how this man had to step out in faith and and do something that the entire medical community forbid him to do in order to cure these kids. And um, of course, you know, medicine is a is an art form, but um, just hearing of your chemo, Linda, reminded me of that story. Incredibly inspiring about how um, I, I believe the Lord used a lot of very difficult times in this man, this doctor's life, to make him who he was so that he could fight the battles that he would have to fight in the medical field in order to help children. It's just, whoa, it's just, it's just really, really inspiring. And that's just one of many stories in, in the um, Malcolm Gladwell's book, uh, David and Goliath. So if you get a chance to listen to either of those, let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree, disagree. You know, and it's okay to disagree on this. That's just that um, these are two, two of his books that I've um, read recent or listened to um, recent, recently, which I think I'm retaining more of it that way than if I had only read them. But I've read several of his other books too, which um, I found very helpful. But anyway, let me know what you think on that. Which reminds me, there's one thing I want to ask you to do. I want you to help me make a video, and I want to make a video with. The loose title is, is Ask Me Almost Anything, okay? And I put the word almost in there because I'm not going political, okay? So just to let you know, if you want to know what side are you on on this argument, I'm not going to answer those kinds of questions. But just about anything else that you want to ask me, um, of course, in the appropriate categories, you know, it, it, I'm not going to respond to inappropriate questions. It, it's obvious, and you know that, I know that, you might, my faithful friends know that. But um, just to, in case there's somebody listening for the first time, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't send, you know, not appropriate questions. But if there's anything you've ever wanted to ask me, um, it could be in regards to really anything, almost anything, okay? Um, I want you to send them to me, bonniebayatme.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a video together I'm going to look at the questions and, and answer as many as I can and try to make it kind of fun and, and as well as, as informative if there's a question that, you know, uh, regarding the craft, regarding crochet that, that you want answered, um, I want to be able to answer that fully and, con you know, and, and concisely um, in a way that's helpful instead of just saying, well, I don't know, contact me. But I want to be able to answer those questions. If you want to answer, you know, ask questions about, I don't know, my childhood or anything like that, I mean, that's fine. Just, you know, I can choose to not answer them. But, <laughs> but if I get some really fun, good questions, I just want to um, just kind of put a video together, kind of going to be called, you know, ask me almost anything. And, um, but I just need your help to do that. Um, so you can send them again. I'll go ahead and put the email address. It's also in the video description, but I'll put it down in the chat. BonnieBay at me.com. So go ahead and send those if you can. Um, all right. Well, let me go ahead and show you some goodies here. I guess most of you have seen um, Rahab's scarf. Let me go ahead and give you a better view. It's really kind of hard to, to appreciate this until you, you until you see all the stitches up close and you see how the cables go from one cable over here and then just across from that you have two cables and then it, it changes to one cable with the framed columns and then two cables uh, two columns I'm thinking of my son Caleb and it, it's a rather long it's a rather long scarf so I mean you can you can wrap this you know, quite a, quite a few times and, and keep you nice and warm. Um, and it's also thin. It's made from some yarn. It's listed in the video description below. It's, it's by um, an independent uh, indie, des, indie dyer, you know, yarn designer. It, her name is Laura. And she was, at the, she was actually the person in charge of the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Did a fabulous job there. Um, but this is just really, um, really nice yarn. It's called the Knobby yarn because it has the, uh, the Donegal, um, wool mixed in with it. And, um, this is a fingering weight yarn. It took three of the fingering weight yarns. I think her, her Hanks has about 427 yards and I used almost three. I used about three and two thirds. So if you have 
let's say four hanks with uh, 400 yards, you know, you should be fine if you have yarn in your stash already. Um, if you wanted to make this with thicker yarn, you probably could, and you'd end up with more like a shawl or a super scarf. You can definitely give that a try. Um, and if you want to order the, the same kind of yarn that I use, it's not terribly expensive. It's not, econ it's not super cheap. You know, it's not junky yarn. It's, it's nice yarn. And I, you can check her site. She's, I thought she was on Etsy. She's not, but she has her own website where you can order, um, through her website. And if you do tell her Bonnie sent you, if you order three hanks of the yarn and tell her you want the Rahab scarf kit, you can get the pattern included with the price of the yarn. Okay. Now, if you don't, if you don't get the yarn from her and you want to purchase the, the pattern, I do have it up now, both in my Lovecraft store and on my Etsy, in my Etsy store for a PDF download. So you can definitely check that out. If you are my, one of my watch subscribers, I have a, another, uh, another platform. It's uh, on the, on a Vimeo platform and it's, we call it the watch channel, like, like a wristwatch. And the, the uh, link is in the video description. It's basically watch.bonniebaycrochet.com. And it's a $6.95 a month uh, subscription fee. You can watch most of my videos plus additional content that is not on my public channel here at YouTube. Um, and a number of those do include a complimentary uh, downloadable PDF for the pattern so that you don't have to, you know, go to another platform and purchase the pattern. Um, it's not everything, but most of the patterns do have a PDF download. If it doesn't have a PDF download, it's probably because I no longer own the rights to, um, to the work. Because whenever a designer sells uh, a design to either a magazine or let's say a, a publishing company, like, like I have two books with um, uh, Penguin Random House, I also have several uh, booklets with Leisure Arts, and when you when you write work contracts with them, they become the, the owners of the material. So I can't just give you a free pattern, um, but I think you all understand that. But there are a number of things, uh, unique content um, on the channel, and whenever you watch them on the Watch Channel, it they are totally ad free. Um, I don't put spam or anything in there on the channel. Uh, I will have uh, links sometimes where you can get more information to help you with the design, but it's it's not it's not kind of the spammy kind of stuff where that pops up and tries to distract you. You can just you know watch watch the instructions without um, without distractions, and I think it's a I think it's a lovely platform. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there in case some of people you know you might start getting questions in the coming weeks, people asking you for a Christmas list and stuff like that. I know our family tends to do that and just tell them, I want a subscription. <laughs> um, and if you subscribe for the entire year, um, you save about just under $14 for the year. So it's a little bit cheaper if you go for the year. All right. Well, let me go ahead and show you. I'm really excited to show this to you guys. Um, I met this wonderful lady named Jennifer when I was in New Orleans and we sat next to each other. Um, during the professional development day, it was a very full class and it was mostly other designers, people are interested in growing their business. And like I, I've told you about these before. And if you ever want to, um, uh, attend the CEG, the Crochet Guild of America conference, definitely, if you're looking to grow your business, uh, online, definitely take this class. Well, I was sitting next to her and she showed me her latest publication. This is a self-published book that she is publishing on Amazon. It is available. It's doing very well. Um, and her, her, um, online presence or our business is called Daisy Farm Crafts. Maybe some of you have seen, isn't that a beautiful cover? Um, she is a grandma now and, I, and, and they're very, very excited, um, about their little baby there. And I wanted to show you just, um, some of the pictures in here, these, these patterns are very beginner friendly. 
um, beautifully photographed, lots of beautiful pictures, clear instructions, and let me show you something that I learned from Jennifer. I'm uh, not Jennifer. I'm Tiffany. I'm sorry, Tiffany. One thing that I, I, I was looking through this book, and I noticed that you see the little QR code here? Instead of having links, they have added QR codes to their book. And so she gave me the idea, and I'm like, I am so glad I saw that because I'm working on a beginning book, as you well know, and it's going to have the QR codes in there. So what I want to do, I want to spend one minute explaining how to do this, because I know many of you know how to work these by now, because COVID taught us a lot on how to use these things and how to do contactless ordering and stuff. Well, what you need to do, if you want to find out how to get to this video, all you do is get your phone or your iPad and or other device and go to the photos where you would take a photo and then you just hover it over the square. And when you do that, it brings up the link and you just touch it, you click on it, and it'll take you right to the place where you need to be for the video. If you are, if you like to watch your videos on uh, your computer, what you can do is, is look it up on your phone and then just send yourself a text with that link in it. It's an easy way to get it from one to the other. Or I, you could maybe even hold it up in front of your computer. But um, but anyway, these are very easy to get to. And she has many beautiful blankets um, in here. Um, not all the designs don't have the QR codes, but many of them do. Okay, a lot, a lot of beautiful things in here. Let me... Um, let me flip through. And here, you, of course, the ripple is a very common. Uh, I'm going to have a ripple in my, in my book as well. That's a, that's a very basic, fundamental um, way to do that. Oh, look, and you can even see that she puts a border on the ripple, sh should you be interested in doing something like that. So Michelle from Montana, this is going to be yours. All you need to do is send me um, an email and I will get this in the mail to you. It's going to be coming from South Carolina, so it, it may take a little bit longer than if it was coming from Maryland because I'm a little bit further south. Lots, okay, lots and lots of beautiful blankets. There are a lot of patterns in here. 55 crochet patterns, that's a lot. And um, let me see. And they do have some wearables. Hats. Um, scarves. Like I said, this is just a really good beginner book, I think, or, or even you know, intermediate. This is a really cute, cute headscarf. I love the, the little twist in it. I have to show you this. This is very colorful. Oh, not that one. Well, it disappeared. <laughs> but lots and lots. There you go. There's a cute picture. Little kids wearing the striped hat. So I imagine this could... Uh, Really, really be a great, great book, um, especially if you're looking for, you know, for gifts, you know, small, easy to crochet gifts uh, for the holidays. Oh, good. I'm look, um, red hooked saying I really enjoyed Daisy Farm Crafts. Yeah. And I just, just want you to know they are, oh, look at this. This is cute. Look at the rabbit ears. Isn't that cute on the hot pad? So, and some Christmas. Those would be really fun uh, little little gifts to give people, you know, at work or or teacher gifts for you know your kids at school. And here's a picture of Tiffany and her daughter Hannah. These are the creators of this. So check them out. They are they are also on Facebook and they have a YouTube channel. Um, so again, Daisy Farm. Crafts and tell them Bonnie said hey, you know, tell them Bonnie sent you and um, definitely check out their things. And let me show you one other thing. I have to tell you, I'm showing my selfishness right now because I'm keeping this in my library. The books can be ordered. You can have a you can have a soft bound book like this, which is absolutely fine. It's wonderful. Um, for about five or six dollars more, Amazon is now making hard bound books available. The beautiful hardbound books. So I, this is going in my personal library. Um, so 
again, my selfishness is showing, but um, I want this, I want to be able to refer this and, and, and point other people to them as well. But just to let you know, when my beginning book comes out, my goal is October 1st, um, no later than October 1st, but I'm getting my final edits back from my editors like today. Um, one of them is sending them back to me. So um, we're getting closer. So the book may even be available before October 1st. I'm just depending on how much, you know, I'm waiting on my editors on this one just to let you know. And I thought that I could take pre-orders, but that's not going to be available the way they've kind of reworked it. Um, so once the book becomes live, I will let you know um, we're not going to have pre-ordering, but hopefully it's not going to delay, wouldn't really change, um, you know, getting it into to your hands if that's something you're interested in. So anyway, go ahead and check them out. Um, let me look. Did that, that, that. Okay, ooh, it's 1236 already. Right. Hopefully everything is going okay in this chat. Um, uh, let me get back to some of you. I'm way behind, but, and I'm spinning now. Hold on a second. Um, hopefully everything is still going. Um, we have Bridget from New Orleans. Yay. Um, and Mimi. Oh my gosh, she says she's been in the hospital since last Thursday. I'm so glad to sit down with a cup of coffee and Bonnie Barker. Thank you for being... Oh my goodness, Mimi, I hope you feel better soon. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to try to refresh fresh this screen. Hopefully it's okay. I'm just, just checking my, my source here. Um, that may have jumbled the chat a little bit. It looks like it did. Let me go ahead and go back to live chat. And skip ads. Okay, we're good. Uh, just wanted to make sure. Um, all right, I'm a little bit behind, guys. You know me. Um, oh, wow. We have somebody from Uruguay. Wow, so you're welcome. This is... um. I can't pronounce the name. Um, Shiatzuzin76. But anyway, so good to have you there. Um, and for those of you who, again, I'll just make, make let you know, my moderator is out having fun with her siblings. So some of these messages. Um, let me go ahead. And some of these messages I'm showing, the algorithm is holding back. Let me go ahead. Sorry about that. Sometimes the algorithm doesn't know a good comment from a bad comment. And, and um, since Hannah's not there to monitor that, it's a little bit slow today. Um, so I may not be able to get to everybody's comments. I'm, I'm still looking back. Okay, that's where I was. I see where I was now. Um, so you have Deborah from Washington State and Gail uh, from Alaska. Hey, Gail. So good to have you guys in the chat and Irene from Michigan and um, Jane Scott said, I just finished the ribbing of the body on the popcorn sweater. Yay. Now for the sleeves. Yay. I, would, I can't wait to see it. I hope, I hope it's, I hope it's fitting you well, Jane, make sure you, you know, take time to, you know, do the, do the fitting on that um, as you go so that you can make adjustments. But I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, and the sweater that Jane's talking about, is very similar to this one. It just uses different yarn and it does use slightly different stitch numbers and it has long sleeves for winter and has ribbing. Again, a little bit, little bit, just slightly different um, to accommodate the different wool yarn that was used. Um, and that'll be coming to the channel sometime this fall. It's already up on the watch channel, but it will be coming, uh, it will be coming to my YouTube channel probably later in the fall. I've got a lot of other fun stuff, fun stuff, fun stuff lined up for you. Um, I've got this coming. This is the Easy Bobble Scarf. Here's another version of it right behind me. Um, and this will be coming out soon. This is using some of the Knit Crate yarn. So um, I used, you know, a box of that for this, this particular um, shawl. And, or you can also, you know, wear this as a scarf. And this behind me is 
one cake of the Lion Brand yarn. This is a number, both of these uh, are number three, number three weight yarns, I believe. Oh, this, this might have been a number four. So you can really use any, any um, number, any size yarn you want. And it can also be a really great stash buster. So if you have a lot of like number four weight yarn and you just want to make a bobble scarf or something with that, you can do it. But that'll be coming in a couple, uh, in a few weeks. I don't have that specifically um, dated just yet. Oh, pardon me, my nose it just will not stop bothering me. Um, we have Cindy from Oregon and Annie from New Zealand. Wow. Uh, I would love to go to New Zealand. And uh, yeah, Terry's like, ooh, New Zealand. <laughs> um, and spell check. Oh yeah, spell check doesn't. They, they, I think spell check is out to get me sometimes. And uh, let's see, we have let's see. Um, uh, Selena is in our chat, and uh, Love to Craft says it's been very warm in Southern California these past few days. Oh boy, well you guys always get the really great weather when the rest of us are freezing. So. <laughs> I'll try to be sympathetic. I'll try. I'll try. But we're starting to feel some really nice um, fall weather. Uh, although it's going to be in the upper 80s here in South Carolina, the humidity is is lower and it, it is much more pleasant. So I'm really glad for that. Um, and we have, let's see, uh, Annie Clayton in the chat and Nanny Lanny loves to craft. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, she says, hi, Bonnie. Glad to see you back. I just got off from Isle of Wight after the birth of my granddaughter, born on 30th. Oh, congratulations, Nanny Lanny. Um, Violet Rose, stay blessed, everyone. Oh, how blessed are you? That is so wonderful. Well, congratulations. I pray the health of the mom and the baby are, well, you know, are, are doing well. Um, yes, Terry says, what a lovely name, Violet Rose. And again, Kelly, thank you for telling people to just hit that thumbs up button if you get a chance. Wow, a lot of you have, 77, thank you. That'll maybe help this uh, to go a little bit further. Um, oh, well, and Brad's mom says that um, Lanny, Nanny Lanny's granddaughter was born on her 70th birthday. Wow. And violets and roses are her favorite flowers. How wonderful. Wow. <laughs> and then we have Aisha in the chat and Jan and um yeah Tracy says I'm I am missing Hannah I hope she's doing well she is Tracy she's doing very well she had a great flight home last night and um she's hanging out with my son Joseph and his wife Sarah and just really excited for my kids um they they uh Sarah and yeah Sarah and Joseph they're they were able to get a contract on a house. I'm like, my kids are adulting, you all. I mean, how amazing is that? <laughs> They're all adults. I mean, I, I, they've been adults for a while, but it's just, it's just amazing just to see the grace of God on them, on their lives, and just making these really, really wonderful decisions and, and, and doing well. It's, you know, after seeing them struggle at times, but it's just, it's just really a blessing to me, the mom, to. See that we still have some other struggles going on here and there, but you know, it's the training course that we're supposed to be in, right? To make us stronger. Um, and Terry Redmond says, um, hello, Bonnie, able to hop on before I leave for aqua therapy. Yeah, pray all is well. My tip, I have a Bible in my vehicle and hide money and copy of my license. That's a good idea. Um, where we are in Maryland, we can actually put our driver's license information legally um, to use as ID on our cell phone, but you have to go to the MVA and do the process. And I really wasn't home long enough. Uh, I just didn't think to do it or I, it didn't get done. My husband does that with his. So if he has his cell phone, he doesn't have to carry a wallet, which is really cool. So, I mean, that's something that, that, that um, a lot of places are going to and I'm going to do that next time uh, and just hope and pray I never lose both the wallet and the phone. <laughs> so we'll see. You never know. I'm, ama I'm amazing. I'm capable of doing that. <laughs> we'll see. Um, then we have, is that, is that IB Serenity? If I, am I saying that right in our chat? And um, oh, thank you, Archer Nace, for praying for, for Terry. Um, 
I do hope all is well for you, Terry. Yes, thank you for the reminder um, to, to pray. One Terry for another Terry. And um, yeah, Jean in the chat just says, I'm loving your patterns and tutorials. Well, yay, thank you, Jean. I'm glad they work for you. I know, let me tell you one thing this, this, this past week, I realized, you know, not everybody gets what I do and that's okay. I mean, there are some people that just have a really hard time with cables and stuff and you know, that's okay. That's okay. Um, it's not for everybody and I totally get that. Um, but it just really does bless me when you guys understand what I'm trying to convey through the videos. Cause you know, I know not everybody gets it and some people get just downright upset. Um, but that's okay. You know, that's okay. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just yarn. It's just a hook and yarn. Come on. Right. I mean, it's not like it's, um, you know, a life threatening situation here. <laughs> anyway, um, it's just yarn. Um, so let's see, we have Jean France in the chat. Okay. I just read your comment and, um, and, um, oh, thank you, Terry. I'll tell Hannah that you, you said that I have her check the chat. Um, we have Annie in the chat. Um, oh, she said she's currently making the Celtic Mandala Afghan and loving it all. And, and you are so welcome for, for these tutorials. I, I'm so glad it's working for you, Annie. You're on a particularly tough one in case you get, you know, come into some trouble. A lot of people have had trouble with the, uh, with the uh, woven stitch. I probably could have taken more time with that. But, you know, you do the best that you can when you're doing it. And you learn later and hopefully the, you know, whatever, whatever was inadequate with that one. Um, it's just helped me to be better with the photos that follow that. Oh, and, um, and, uh, yeah, we have Linda. Okay. Linda from Uruguay. Wow. That's amazing. And, uh, Dawn, um, oh, wow. She says, thank you for all your help posting. I'm falling in love with cables. Yay. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Um, and let's see, uh, I love, I love you guys talking to each other. Uh, oh, thank you, Beth. She said, I shall send photos of the cross stitch in the email. That'd be great. And if you can give me permission to, to post them, that would be nice. I always ask people that because I just don't want to assume, um, that they want it to go live. And, and I'll tell you another reason why I don't just post things like crazy, um, Again, I want your permission to be able to put them on a public platform. But also, sometimes you guys are all you always working hard to make something for somebody else for that special gift. And the last thing that I want to have happen is that you know a surprise gift gets ruined because of a Facebook post that I put up of your project. So um, that's another reason. So, and I know a lot of people have said, "Oh, don't yeah, you know, I can't can't go public with this just yet." And I'll say, "Well, send it back to me when you do." And then I can, you know, maybe post it at some point. Okay. And, um, sure, Kelly, I'd be glad to, to look at your, um, pictures of the doily. I, I love doilies. I'm just not very good at making them. And Cynthia Burke says, I love my audio books, especially while I'm traveling. Yeah, I, I bought, um, I bought some iPods, the, the ear noise canceling things that go in your ears. Um, so that I can go out and exercise and, um, you know, walk a long distance and then still listen to music or to an audio book. Not that I exercise that much. Ugh, guys, pray for me that I will be motivated to get out. I need to do more of that. I really do. Uh, I just so love my craft. I just want to work on my crafts, my, work on my crochet and design work. And there's so much of it to do. I just need to get, I need to pull away from it more often and get out and walk and just do something physical. Um, so I bought them to do that and I still haven't used them much. But when I bought them, I got like a bunch of free audio books from Audible. And uh, so that's where I'm listening to them, which is kind of nice. So I haven't had to pay for anything yet. But, um, and I think I get extra credits from Amazon affiliate accounts or something like that. But uh, it's it's been really nice. I got a lot of books lined up, so I need to get my act together. I can listen to them while I crochet too, but I need to get out and, and move. So, all right. Um, Jane Chapman wants to know: Can it be made a little shorter? I'm sorry, Jane. I, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. 
But you can always email me with your question. I know you do sometimes, and I, I love to hear from you. So, um, yeah. And Jacqueline says, I love Audible. Yeah, it, it, it's a really nice thing. It's really cool, too, when the author reads the book. So, and, and the ones I was telling you about, Malcolm Gladwell, he's reading the book. So the inflections in his voice are generally what he intended when he wrote. So you get that added benefit um, when it's author read as well. Oh, thank you, Linda, Brad's mom. She says, I love your watch channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support, guys. Um, Yeah, Kelly's having some trouble there. Um, oh, and Lynn says, Rahab, a wonderful name you chose for the scarf. King David's great, great, great grandmother, a hero just like him. I tell you what, I just love, I, I love the stories in the Bible, especially of the underdogs. You know, um, there are so many people, there are stories of people who are underprivileged, um, who are not royalty, who are not... Um, who are just average people who really, if we looked at them through the lens of the way we might look at people today, there would basically be nothing special about them. But God just picks them out, you know, of all the just average folks like us. And it's like, I'm going to use you. And, and um, yeah, so Rahab is one of those people. Doesn't come from a stellar background by any stretch of the imagination, for those of you who know the story in Joshua. Um, she might have even been from a questionable profession, but she's a hero. I love what she did, and I love I love the red. And I was thinking when I saw that yarn, I'm like, Rahab. That's got to be a Rahab scarf. So anyway, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, look it up. I, I just, just take take a look at it. It's in the book of Joshua, I believe. Um, yeah, so, um, oh, and Tracy Hamilton says, um, Daisy Farm Crafts also has a YouTube channel. She has some gorgeous blankets. Yes, she has a YouTube channel and she also has a website and they're also on Facebook. So, the, and I think Instagram as well. So, um, if you want to check them out, you, you should be able to find those links. If you go to them at their YouTube channel, I'm sure the links will be in the video description so you can get in touch with them and love to craft likes Daisy farm crafts as well um and beth has okay she's gone back to work well beth it was so great meeting you she was she is such a sweetheart um we have mel's crochet corner and more hey mel um so glad that you could join us and um let's see oh you guys are so sweet um and red hook watches um daisy farm crafts yeah uh, tiffany I haven't met her daughter, but Tiffany is just a sweet, genuine, lovely lady. Um, so, so happy for them. And, um, all right, looks like some of you guys are having some, some trouble. That happens sometimes with the live. Um, all right. Okay, I'm getting a lot of comments here. I may not get to everybody, and if I don't get to yours, I'm so sorry. Um, See, Dan Miller says, love your channel. Learned so much from you. Thanks for not blasting music while explaining a pattern. I'm left-handed, but can never hold my hand correctly. Wish I could do it like others. Um, well, Dan, I hope you know that if you ever see my videos, um, I have a left-handed version of it. So all you need to do is put left-handed in the name of that video that pops up, and you'll get your left-handed version. So you don't have to try to rethink too hard. Um, you guys who are left-handed are have got to be the smartest people in the world because you have to, to do so much. Oh, oh, Brat's mom is talking about her friend has stage four, oh my gosh, breast cancer. Said, loves the Liberty shawl. I gave her as a prayer shawl. I'm so glad I could give her something that gave her such joy. Oh, how kind of you, Linda. Wow, I cannot imagine what she's going through. And Tracy says, yes, Bonnie, it's wonderful to see our kids doing so well. My two are excelling way more than myself. And by the grace of God, my son is coming from Alaska, relocating to, um, is it Missouri? In the Air Force. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, um, I tease my kids too because now two of my kids have really, 
I mean, they're not mansions, but they're nice. I mean, nicer than the house I grew up in. And they have garages. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, I don't have a garage. <laughs> so I keep changing them and saying, my next house is going to have a garage. So I can park my Miata indoors in the wintertime instead of having that snow pile up on top of it. But, um, but yeah, it was just kind of, it, it's a blessing to see your kids do well. Yeah. Um, they, they are growing up in a different world than we did. That's for sure. And we have Elizabeth from Italy. Hey, Elizabeth. Is it Elisabetta? Elisabetta? I'm sorry. But so good to see you. I'm going to, um, if, if all goes well, I am scheduled to be in your country next month. So um, I'm looking forward. We're, we're going to be in Rome and it may get to drive to see more of your country. Um, so yeah, I don't know any Italian, but I am really, really, really looking forward to going back to Rome and being there with my husband. Uh, we have Judy from Lindstrom, Minnesota, and Selena. She said, just finished um, the Ripple Bobble Blanket for two autistic children as sensory blankets. Oh, how sweet of you. And that is a great idea. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, I, I've worked with a lot of autistic children when I was substitute teaching a few years back in the public schools. And yeah, they love texture. Texture and all sorts of things. Um, so guys, can we have, is it Shiny Philip? Um, so applying to do the rehab scarf. And Mrs. Yukon Cornelius is Gloria from Illinois near St. Louis. Oh, sweet. And, um, okay. And Lynn says, will your new books and ongoing, um, uh, books be hard copy in your store? Um, Lynn, I'm going to try to get both the softbound and the hardbound of the new book only. Um, they will be available in my online Etsy store when I'm home in Maryland. Um, if you go to my Etsy store now, you're not going to find the books that I send out. Um, occasionally, I'll have books available where I, I sign. I can, you, know, you can get them signed and, um, and I send to you. And they're really no more expensive than what you would get other places. Um, yeah, because I've tried to I've tried to kind of mediate that with uh, that's for domestic only. That's only for U.S. shipping, just because it's so much more expensive shipping overseas, even to Canada. Um, you end up paying like three times the price of of the books being sent. So I, I know that's not good for you. It's not good for anybody. So, um, but just to let you know that once the book is available, I'm planning on having a, a stock a healthy stock of them at my home. Um, so when I'm at home in Maryland, I will be sending them out. Um, I'll be able to send them out for those who want them, but they'll also be available on Amazon, maybe even cheaper if you're a prime member because you can get them sent out for free, you know, free shipping rather. So I hope that answers your question, Lynn. Um, Oh, thank you, Mel. Just Mel's crochet corner and more safe. Oh, the, the thumbs up again. You guys are really hitting it today. Thank you so much. Um, and Harriet talking about, about this book, you know, looks like a great pattern book. It is. It, it's a very nice book. Um, you can learn to make a lot of different things. I think it's particularly um, good for, for beginners who want to learn. And you also have video links with a lot of these, um, a lot of these patterns as well. So... All right, um, I, I am going to scroll on down here because I am running way behind. Um, okay, Kelly Hart's asking about the shawl that's beside me. Um, I guess you're talking about, about this one, Kelly. Um, there are a lot of number of ways you can wear this. I mean, you could just, you know, simply tie it in the back if you want, tie it behind. Uh, trying to do it without getting my hair tangled. You can just tie it on like this and wear it and you know, put your coat on and um, it's, these are really nice in the winter time or you can just wear it as a nice shawl. And I have a, a video if you're looking for a lot of other creative ways to wear it. Um, check out uh, the video I have. Um, you can always email me if you want the link directly, but there's a link with Jewel Designs. There's a, a video I spent 
more than an hour with Laura of Jewel Designs, and she is probably the most creative person I've ever met as far as how to wear shawls and scarves and things like that. And she's actually going to be one of the instructors at Stitches West, I believe it is, coming up. I don't have all the dates on that. It's not a, a conference I'll be traveling to because I'm going to be out of the country. Um, but she's going to be teaching there. And But you can get a preview and see a lot of what she's going to be teaching in that video. So um, if you can't find the link, just email me, Kelly, and I can send it to you. Um, so... Almer wants to know the pattern of the shawl on the chair. This is the this has not come out yet. This will be coming out in a few weeks, um, but it will be called the Easy Bobble Scarf. And it's it, it is the same as what you see behind me here. It's just different yarns. So that is not available yet, but it is coming. But thank you, Lynn. She's gay. She said the story of Rahab is in the book of Joshua, chapter two. So you don't even have to read that much to get to Rahab. Um, and Tracy says, um, I tell my kids, I'm so glad you have a big and beautiful home because you get the privilege of taking care of your mom. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, that's a good point, Tracy. So I can decide where I want to live when I get a little bit older. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, don't want to burden them with that just yet. But good point. <laughs> Um, I tell you, it was a, it was for the most part, it was, it was a lot easy, but it was a joy to take care of my mom in that way. And, um, you know, you, you know, we owe everything to our parents. So, uh, it's the least we could do. And we have, let's see. Oh, Selena says, thank you so much for doing left-handed. My pleasure. It's just the miracle of the mirrored image on these videos. I just make sure I set, I upload a separate one so that you can see it. And Elisabetta says, uh, wonderful, have a nice journey in Italy. Thank you. We were supposed to take the trip like two years ago at tw in 2020, but you all know what happened then. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to being able to, to travel together. Especially since my husband and I have been apart so much with, um, you know, the traveling with the pandemic and, and, you know, trying to take care of some, you know, of, of his mom and everything, which we, it's been an absolute joy to do. Um, but it has just meant at times with state regulations saying you can't do this, you can't do that um, from Maryland's side. Um, it's been a little bit of a burden on, because of the, that, but, um, but it's just nice that we'll be able to, to get away and spend time together. Uh, Cynthia says she got two beautiful magnetic shawl pins in Pittsburgh, wonderful. Well, let me go ahead. I do have one more thing to show you. Where did I put it? Oh, right here. I'm so late in getting to this, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, there is something coming on. I just wanted to show you what is coming uh, to our channel on Monday. I am going to be showing you how to make the Caramat cabled set. You can make you, know, you can make these in sets or individually. And there are two layers to this. And it's connected with the neural stitch or the reverse single crochet. I know I, I saw some of you cringing out there. <laughs> um, but these are really fun. You can you can use them as pot holders. They are thick enough. You will not get burned, but you need to make sure you do both the front and the back sides. Um, they also are really nice for putting on the counter. And especially if you have like a for mica countertop like mine, I know a lot of you may have the uh, the granite countertops. Well, I'm still in the in the 1970s. I have for mica, and if I put a really hot pot on my countertop, it will burn. So I put them on top of something cotton cushy or whatever. And if you are subscribers, you already have the pattern. Um, it's featured in Crochet World magazine. And this is a kind of an interesting um, addition because there are a lot of cable stuff in here. Um, so, so these are in here. And um, let's see. So if you have the magazine, you've already gotten the pattern. Um, on Monday, the the video the video is live if you click the link that on the Crochet World site. But the pattern will be. Uh, the video rather will be absolutely live come Monday for, for everybody. I am the pattern information as always will be in the video description. It'll also be up on my 
watch channel and the complimentary pattern will be there for you. It will, if you want just the pattern, which will also include links to the video, um, this, this will be both in my Etsy and in my Lovecraft store. So I think it's already up in the Lovecraft store, but anyway, so just wanted to let you know about that before I go. And is there anything else? Um, oh yes, September 19th, I am planning on releasing the, the, uh, the teal blue throw that I showed you. I don't have it with me because I couldn't put that in my car. I just didn't have the space to carry it. But the Shannon's Wandering Throw, which is a cabled throw, um, and that used 19 balls of Universal Yards Uptown Worsted Yarn. You'll, you'll need about 3,500 yards of a worsted weight yarn, whatever you want. Uh, but I used 19 balls of the Universal Yarns Uptown Worsted. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and start getting that, I believe there's a link in the video description below. But again, you could just use, you know, any yarn really. But to get 3,500 yards of the same dye lot, I know is tricky if you just go up to your local Mike, uh, Michaels or Joann's. But um, you may have to make an online purchase. And if you do, be checking the yarn sales because I've noticed that even Lovecrafts, again, I have a link for that in the video description to Lovecrafts. They have um, a really nice acrylic yarn as well. And um, it it is sometimes on sale. And when it does, you can get a lot of the same color that you need in the same dye lot. And oftentimes for less than $3 um, a ball. And they have, I believe it's 200. The yardage is a little bit more than Universal. It's 201 yards per ball. So just, just a hint there. Um, I know sometimes you do have to pay shipping. But uh, sometimes as you get you know, closer to the holidays, you'll see yarn sales with a really deep discount that'll make it worth doing. And, I'm, and again, the reason that I like to order online is because I just can't find enough of the same dye lot at the, in the store. In fact, I wrote a song about that, about you know, looking for yarn and you just can't find enough. I, I've encountered that so many times. But um, anyway, well, let me read something to you guys um oh brenda's hey brenda my sister just chimed in um to the chat um and jane says i love the neural stitch it is fun once you understand how to go backwards yes yeah, once you understand is is the the key phrase here right um that if they're if you want to drive somebody crazy you know and they don't know that stitch try to teach them that stitch it's it's really interesting ah love the craft says yes for micah countertops as well Yay! I'm not the only one. Um, and I don't plan on changing them anytime soon. I mean, they, they've worked fine, even with the knife cuts in them and all. I mean, it is what it is. But um, anyway, well, let me go ahead and I want to read. I, I read this a couple days ago. Um, this, is, this is from my morning and evening with Spurgeon. He's a... He's probably my favorite 19th century preacher. I have learned so much from him. And I just love his humility. And this particularly spoke to me. Um, this is based on Psalm 62, 8, um, and it, which says, Trust in him at all times. So let me go ahead and just read his words. Uh, they're just so good. Let me commend to you a life of trusting God in temporal things. Trusting in God, you will not be compelled to mourn because you have used sinful means to grow rich. Serve God with integrity. And if you achieve no success, at least no sin will lie upon your conscience. Trusting God, you will not be guilty of self-contradiction. He who trusts in craft sails this way today and that way the next, like a vessel tossed about by the fickle wind. But he that trusts in the Lord is like a vessel propelled by steam. She cuts through the waves, defies the wind, and makes one bright silvery straightforward track to her destined haven. Be you a man or woman with living principles within, Never bow to the varying customs of worldly wisdom. 
Walk in your path of integrity with steadfast steps and show that you are invincibly strong in the strength which confidence in God alone can confer. Thus you will be delivered from carking care. You will not be troubled with evil tidings. Your heart will be fixed, trusting in the Lord. How pleasant to float along the stream of providence. There is no more blessed way of living than a life of dependence upon a covenant-keeping God. We have no care, for he careth for us. We have no troubles because we cast our burdens upon the Lord. I hope that refreshed you today um, as much as it did me when I read it. I just need to be reminded constantly. And um, and Spurgeon is a good person to remind me through his works. Even though he's been with the Lord for more than 100 years, he still speaks. And I just love that. Well, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. I look forward to being here next week with you guys. Um, Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.